Thank you for joining today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. And thank you for having a desire to be your best at work and helping your organization achieve success. This podcast focuses on tactical actions to improve workplace culture. And these tactics align to our nine principles for organizational excellence. Think about this statistic. About one in four people quit their jobs within the first 90 days. And there are others who stick it out and are miserable. According to Jobvite, a leading software applicant tracking system, 43% say that their day-to-day role wasn't what they thought it would be. 34% report an incident or bad experience drove them away. And 32% did not feel the organization was a cultural fit. Have you ever had a job where you can't wait until the weekend, like every week? It can't get here fast enough, and it's over way too soon. Or the night before going to work, you feel completely miserable. And when you're working, you can't believe how long a given day feels to you. Many of us have been there at least once in our lives, and some of us are living it right now. And for me, once was enough. I graduated with a business degree in 1985. The unemployment rate was about 8%, improving from an all-time high of 10% in 1983. College placement counselors were telling us that We were entering a job market with one of the worst unemployment rates since World War I. Now, I don't know about you, but that was not very uplifting to me going out into the real world. I was trying to get my first professional job. Graduating from college, I was eager to enter the workforce, learn from professionals, and leverage my skills. I left Tallahassee, Florida and moved to Atlanta and lived with my lifelong best friend as I was looking for a job. I landed my first salary job in Atlanta, showed up for work, was given a manual to read for two days in an office, asked to shadow someone for two days, and then began working my job on the fifth day. I remember the leader of the organization. He came into my office the morning of the fifth day, patted me on the back, and said something to the effect of, you're ready now, go get them. I entered that day with high anxiety. I, I just thought, This must be the professional world, so off I went. Every day the job became more and more miserable. I felt trapped in the daily work and was anxious that if I quit, I would be a failure at my first job. The best part of the job was that I met a headhunter in Atlanta that helped me get another job as I rekindled relationships through knowing others. And within 90 or so days, I made a transition from my first job to another. At this second job, I got lucky. One of the leaders of the company served as a mentor to me. His name was Steve Rue. He taught me a great deal, lessons I continue to apply today. Bad workplaces negatively affect our lives in significant ways. Working for a bad leader multiplies that effect. It's important for leaders to prioritize the well-being and development of people they supervise. And to do so, Leaders need to get the first 30 to 90 days right. Similarly, the person hired you know, needs to do the same, and more about that on a later episode. In this episode, I provide four actions organizations can take to give new hires a great 90-day experience and set the stage for a long-lasting and productive relationship with new hires. First, in the interview and onboarding process, share the organization's values and how people in the organization are expected to live the values. If you recall, on a former Accelerate Your Performance podcast episode, we focused on ways that organizations operationalize values, and we created standards of practice. These standards provide specific descriptions on how the values are lived by people in the organization. You know, Remember, our values walk the halls rather than hang on the walls. And second, make the first day one of the best days. The onboarding process helps new hires understand the team, the organization, the expectations, and so on. The first day makes a lasting impression. Get this right. Do more rather than less to prepare for this day and ensure that positive connections are made with the team and leaders. Third, Commit to a monthly meeting with employees and begin to educate the new hire on the why, what, and how for doing monthly meetings. We'll talk more about monthly meetings in a later episode. And fourth, hold 30 and 90 day meetings with new hires. The 30 and 90 day meetings are additional checkpoints during this important time of onboarding a new hire. When supervisors schedule monthly meetings with new hires, 
They reinforce that this type of meeting is business as usual. And too often when leaders ask to meet with employees, they're sharing bad news or identifying a problem that needs to be corrected. When leaders call employees into the office, they begin to wonder if they've done something wrong. By letting employees know up front that these meetings will be occurring, leaders can reduce that anxiety. I remember years ago, when I was teaching high school, we had an odd configuration with offices in the school. All of the math, language, and history teachers were in a big room with their own office cubicles. The room was located behind the front office and the principal's office. The principal's assistant would come back to our cubicle to tell us that the principal wanted to speak with us. I remembered that happening to me. As I walked to the principal's office, I heard this undertone of groans with a little laughter by teachers. When I walked out of the principal's office, back to my desk, heads popped up from the cubicles asking me, what did he want? They expected to hear something bad and they were hoping they were not next on his list. As leaders, we have to be aware that our intentions with employees tend to be perceived in different ways than we do. So let's reduce the anxiety of our teams by letting them know in advance that we will be holding 30 and 90 day meetings. Let them know why we are meeting so that we reduce their anxiety about the meeting with us. This is intended to be a good meeting to learn more about the new hire's experiences and ensure they have the best 90 days to set the stage for a bright future with the organization. The leader extends an invitation to a 30-day meeting as a first step, reinforcing this is going to be a positive meeting that helps the leader gain insight about the new hire's experience over the first 30 days. And during the meeting, supervisors ask the following questions. Number one, how do we compare to what we said we would be like? Now remember, 43% of new hires who left within their first 90 days say their day-to-day -day role wasn't what they thought it would be. The responses to this question help leaders gauge their thoughts about what new hires are doing in relation to what we communicated they would be doing. Second question, tell me what you like, what's going well. Give them an opportunity to talk about the positives and to recognize people who have been helpful to them. Doing so will make them more comfortable with the conversation. Third question, I noticed you came to us from wherever they came from. Are there things you did there that might be helpful to us? When people come to us from other organizations, they rely on their past experiences to make sense of the new ones. New hires may have good ideas about how we can do something better. What do we tend to do when new hires offer advice from their past experience? You know, we say something like, that was then, this is now. You don't work at that organization anymore. This is the way we do things here. And by asking this question, you know, we may gain some best practices that worked in other places. So let's listen. Let's listen to their ideas. When new hires offer a new idea or practice, we have to remain open to listen and learn. You know, think about it. The worst thing we could do is tell the new hire how that wouldn't work here. We ask about that experience, probe for understanding, and intently listen. Fourth question, is there anything here you are uncomfortable with? Remember, 34% of new hires leave because of an incident or bad experience that drove them away. We want new hires to tell us about their discomfort so that we can do something about a situation before it goes on too long. We want to address issues head on and quickly to give the new hire and our team the best opportunities to work to achieve results. And fifth, as your supervisor, how can I be helpful? We want new hires to know we are here to help them be their best at work and achieve success. On the 90th day, we suggest that leaders ask the same questions as they did on the 30 days and also add another to the mix if we're hiring new people on our team. And that question is, is there anyone you know who might be valuable to our team? This question helps us add talent to our team. Some of our best hires are people who others have recognized as high performers. Join us in New Orleans this September to explore leadership at all levels of higher education. Leaders across campuses share how they gained the leading edge in service to students and built a great place to work attitude among employees. Learn how colleges and universities are leading excellence every day to become institutions of choice for students at Destination High Performance on September 10th and 11th. Topics include 
building ownership among employees, developing an improvement mindset, and leading cultural transformation. For more information or to register, please visit studereducation.com slash events. So let's engage in a 90-day meeting. This is a real situation on our team with Becca Padilla. She is a business development analyst on our team. She's agreed to engage in a 90-day meeting with me. Becca's close to the end of her first 90 days, and her supervisor will hold a, a quote, real conversation with her in a, in a couple of weeks. I've just asked her to engage in a conversation with me for our podcast listeners so that you can get a sense of what that 90-day conversation feels like. So, Becca, thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. Happy so, to be here. All right. So, uh, let's get started. I'm going to, we're going to get role play, but I really want you to, you know, just answer the questions in the best way that, that you want to respond, and uh, in, we'll enjoy this opportunity with you. Okay. So, I would start with uh, just recognize, if, if we were doing this for real, I would ask Becca, I would just say hello, and I would usually greet Becca you know, with something personal, asking her what, what she has done or ha- make a connection with her. But today I'm just going to jump right into the questions and just kind of know from our other episodes that, that there's great ways that we introduce ourselves when we start a meeting. So let me start with the questions. So Becca, you know, how do we compare to what we said we would be like when we hired you? I would say very consistently. Um, there's more involvement which I appreciate, and being involved in the conversations of different aspects that I didn't realize I would touch on, um, but in a way that it's increasing my understanding of what we do here. Also, one big thing that everybody talked about when I was interviewing was the culture and how everybody is very close-knit and helpful to each other, and I've definitely seen that and experienced that, and everybody has been extremely helpful um, here. And so, yeah. That's great. You know, and it's so, um, as I thought about uh, asking you to, to do the, this session with mm-hmm. me, I thought, oh my gosh, it's so, you have, you have come in and fit in so nicely. You know, you've grabbed on to the culture, and I'm just amazed at the knowledge that you bring to us. So, you know, just so glad that there's a connection there, and just appreciate your your ability to be open to that as well. So just wanted to thank you for that. Thanks. Um, so, so tell me what you like. You know, what's, what's going well for you? Think back over the 90 days. You know, what's, what's really working for you, Becca? Yeah. Um, well, first, it doesn't feel like 90 days. <laughs> it feels yeah. like I've been here longer, but, yeah. but at the same time, way. it's been really you know, it short. Does. It yeah, does. It's been fantastic. Yeah. But um, I appreciate the check-ins like this um, and being aware that they're coming and knowing because like I have notes so that I know like mm-hmm. just ideas of what I want to say so I don't forget um, meetings kind of make me nervous sometimes but knowing that it's coming up is super helpful to me yeah um, so I appreciate the check-ins also the clear expectations from the beginning to now mm. and being able to adapt to those depending on the experience that I bring but also anything that I you know, have shown strength in or weakness in, um, it's, it's very adaptable. Yes. Um, and like I said, everyone's willingness to help has yeah. been fantastic. Yeah. And I think that, you know, your adaptability and, you know, we were together, uh, last week at a, at an event and, mm-hmm. you know, your ability to come in strong and build that adaptability into your environment and also be open to that, you know, has really mm-hmm. contributed greatly and made you a significant part of the team. So thank you, thank you Becca. You know, I noticed you came from, you know, other, other places, you know, when, when we first connected when through the interview process, I know you came from other companies with business development experiences mm-hmm. or, or you know, are there things that you did there, you know, that we could learn from? Um, for the most part, it's it's pretty consistent with, with what we're doing. It's sometimes in the little things. Um, one thing we used to say at my old company was the only way that you can eat an elephant is a bite at a time. Yeah, so I love it. So really going into crystallizing goals and starting from what you want to be at and breaking it down by metrics mm-hmm. and how many calls do we have to make or how many demonstrations do we have to do um, to hit our goal. Um, I think sometimes the the analytical side of me wants to 
break it down to a number. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that's helpful for Mm -hmm. goal setting. Yeah. Um, Is there anything that you're uncomfortable with here, you know, that, um, you know, that just don't want, just want to make sure that you're moving forward in in the best way? Is there anything that's making you uncomfortable that we, you know, need to address? No, I think it's, if anything, it's not, it's not really uncomfortability. It's, um, being confident in mm-hmm. my background um, because I know a lot, everyone here, not everyone here, but mm-hmm. most people here have an education background, like to a mm. extensive knowledge degree. And I have some background and, you know, I was in K through 12. So, yeah. <laughs> but beyond that, it's, um, yeah, it's difficult to kind of hold my credentials to to what I want it to be, but I think it's a learning process. Yeah, and, that's great. and Ryan's been great with giving me resources to like read up, read up on and being involved in the conversations of what what we do and the different partners that we have and the work mm-hmm. being done. That's been very helpful to me. So, yeah, I think that's you know that's a um, thank you for that because mm-hmm. um, you know I I think it's it's probably you coming in from comfort of making sure you fit into the K-12 background, because we have people on our team who have unbelievable experiences, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the other part is, I look at it from the standpoint, from a business development and partner development perspective, you know, we're not, we're not that, that, that is not our background, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're educators and have worked with organizations in many aspects. So, you know, I think you, I think you, what I've recognized is you can bring things to us in ways that we've never thought about. Mm -hmm. You know, so I like the idea, I think what I hear you say, I like the idea is as you begin to build the confidence in the K-12 world, you know, we can integrate that into your knowledge with business development and really marry those two, you Mm -hmm. know, with strategic conversations together. Does that, am I, is that right? Am I hearing that? Yep. Okay, good. Well, good. Well, that's, that's, um, you know, I know I've I've set you up with a with me with a couple of calls in August as a way to begin to yes. to get you into the conversation in ways that I can't you know can't succeed like you can. So, you know, just appreciate your willingness to do that. Yeah. So, um, is there anything, you know, I know I'm not your direct supervisor, but you know, from a you know as an executive leader, is there anything I can do to be helpful to you? You know that that's not been there. No, nothing else different. I I take criticism pretty well I I like to think um Mm -hmm. so anytime there's any type of criticism I'm happy to hear it I'm happy to change what I'm doing or adapt what I'm doing so um I've been getting pretty good feedback from Mm -hmm. everyone so just keep doing that (laughs) yeah that's good and I can you know I just with and I mean this um and with great great sincerity Becca I am thrilled that you're with us I uh remember the day that I was driving to Lafayette, Louisiana, and Mm -hmm. we were on the phone and just at a touch point, and, you know, just a couple of us had a connection with you and felt just really good about quick connections with calls and, you know, just brought you onto our team, and um, I'm just just amazed at, at we were were right with our instinct, and then we, we dug down a little bit deeper to understand if there was a fit between us, and you know, it, we made that yes decision. You made that yes decision, and it's one of it'll be one of the best decisions we've made. So, I agree. Same thank on you. my end. That's great. Thank Thanks. you very much for for joining me today, and uh, look forward to connecting with you again out in the field. Sounds good. Thank good. you. Janet. Thank you. When leaders engage in thirty and ninety day conversations with new hires, they show they are committed to retaining new hires on the team. The 30 and 90 day meetings build a supportive workforce culture to which problems are proactively addressed and individuals are recognized for the work that produces results. So this week, let's make some commitments to our new hires. First, if you have a new hire, let new hires know you're going to do 30 and 90 day meetings with them. Tell them why you're doing so, what will occur, and how you will proceed. Then schedule the meeting. And second, if you don't have a new hire at this time, Work with your team of leaders and create a process for applying 30 and 90 day meetings in your organization. Remember, about one in four new hires leaves organizations within the first 90 days. When you've hired the right person to do an important job with your team, there's nothing more important than keeping that person on board. To do so, we need to ensure that new hires day-to-day role is what they thought it would be, New hires feel the organization is a cultural fit, and new hires have good experiences. And if they've had a bad one, 
address the situation, and turn it around quickly. Most of us feel anxious when we start a new job. We're excited to begin a new experience, yet uncertain about how we'll fit into the organization. Leaders have one of the most important responsibilities when they hire new team members, to give people every opportunity to have purpose, do worthwhile work, and make a difference for others. So let's hardwire 30 and 90 day meetings with new hires. It's one of the most important actions we can take in our organizations. And if you are a colleague to a new hire, be intentional about supporting new hires, especially in their first 90 days. New hires will appreciate you and you will be doing something worthwhile for them. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. I look forward to connecting with you on our next episode where we'll answer the question, do people really want feedback? Have a great week.